We all have a picture in our heads of what it's like to be an astronaut. You float around, you have to strap yourself in to use the toilet. It's very cool, but also kind of difficult. But have you ever asked yourself why astronauts float around? In fact, astronauts don't float. Astronauts are falling all the time. Hello and welcome to Flip Physics. Today we're going to talk about freefall. I'm calling this freefall part one because when we get onto the topic of forces, we'll be able to talk in a little bit more detail about what happens when people fall. In October 2012, Felix Baumgartner, is that how you say his name? Um, anyway, he broke the world skydiving record uh, by falling 24 miles. They call it from the edge of space. Well, not really. Actually, space was way further up than that and it's not exactly conclusively decided where space even begins because it's a gradual process. But in any case, they were billing it as some big, huge deal. He did go a really long way. He also set the world record for the fastest speed of freefall at 843.6 miles per hour. But what happens to your speed when you fall? And why was he able to break that world record? First, let me ask you a simpler question. If I drop a feather and a penny, which one will hit the ground first? Easy, right? The penny falls fastest. But why? Because the penny's heavier. That is definitely the most common answer. But if I take a penny and a piece of paper that is calibrated to have exactly the same mass, exactly, so they weigh exactly the same, and I drop them, the penny still easily lands first. The answer to both the questions I've posed so far is air resistance. Air molecules push on the surface of the paper, slowing it down and keeping it up longer. The penny has much less surface area, and so air resistance just doesn't affect this the same. We can test this idea by putting a feather and a penny in a tube and sucking out all the air. To see a demonstration of that experiment, please click this link. I'll wait. So as you can see, if there isn't any air, all objects fall at the same rate. If you dropped a ping pong ball and a bowling ball off the top of the Empire State Building, they would still, if there was no air, if you could somehow get rid of all the air, they would still land at exactly the same time. Air resistance is the reason that parachutes don't die horribly. They, their parachutes have a large enough surface area that it slows them down so that they can land safely. They slow down until they reach what's called a terminal velocity, and that doesn't mean the velocity at which they die. It means a velocity that doesn't change, that it just gets to a certain speed and doesn't get faster or slower from that speed. And that terminal speed or terminal velocity, if they've got a parachute open, is slow enough that they can land safely. The reason Felix was able to break that world record for speed was not because he fell longer. It was because he started out so high up, where the air was so thin, that there weren't many air molecules pushing against him, there wasn't, that, wasn't very much air resistance, and so there wasn't as much force to slow him down. For the purposes of this unit, this topic of 1D motion, we're going to keep things simple, and we're going to mostly ignore the effects of air resistance. We're going to think about what would happen if there was no air resistance. Without air resistance, if you jumped out of a plane, you would keep getting faster and faster and faster forever, for as long as you fell. You would never reach a maximum speed. By the time you got to the ground, you would go <laughs> What would a displacement time graph of your motion look like? How about a velocity time graph? If you're one of my students, click here to draw your prediction before you continue with the video. You won't lose points for getting it wrong, so just give it your best shot. Next question before I give you the answer to that. If you're speeding up all the time as you fall, what would your speed be after, say, three seconds? To calculate that, you need one other piece of information you need the acceleration due to gravity. On planet Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second. That means that falling objects, objects falling under gravity on Earth, increase speed by 9.8 meters per second every second. If you step out of a plane or, say, drop a ball, the second you let go of it, or the second you step out of the plane, your velocity, your speed is zero. For that instant, before you start to speed up and fall down, you, for that moment, that one infinitesimal moment, your speed is zero. So we start off with zero. After one second, your speed will be 9.8 meters per second. After two seconds, your speed will be double that, 19.6 meters per second. After three seconds, your speed will be 29.4 meters per second. That's just another 9.8 added on top. Every second, your speed increases by that 9.8 
that acceleration of 9.8 meters per second each second. That's just what it means to have an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second. On the moon, gravity is much weaker. The acceleration due to gravity on the moon is approximately 1.6 meters per second per second. That's why freefall on the moon looks so different, so slow and kind of sedate. On Jupiter, on the other hand, a much bigger planet than the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is really strong approximately 26 meters per second per second, depending on exactly where you are. So going back to that question I asked, here are the answers. These are the graphs for the motion of a person free falling if there was no air. So as you fall, you get faster and faster. So you start with the velocity of zero, you're just stepping out the plane or just dropping the ball or whatever it is. You start with that velocity of zero, it gets faster and faster as you fall towards the ground. So that's what the velocity graph looks like. That means your displacement graph is going to be a curve because you start off at a relatively slow speed, and over a certain period of time, you only travel a relatively small distance. But then, over the same period of time later, you're traveling an increasing distance. As you get faster and faster, the rate at which your position, your displacement, changes is getting more and more rapid for each second. If you drew an acceleration time graph of the motion, it would look like this, just a constant value of negative 9.8 meters per second per second. Why negative 9.8? Well, gravity is pulling things down, and we said that we're going to call up positive and down negative. So down, towards the ground, is negative 9.8. That's the same reason that on the velocity graph your velocity is negative, because you're going down, and the same reason that your displacement moves in the negative direction, because you're getting more and more negative. You're moving down the y-axis. So freefall is a topic that's seemingly simple, but can get complicated fast. In a later video we'll talk about the equations we can use to describe freefall, and then when we get into forces, it'll get even more complicated and involved. But for now, the key thing you should understand is the way objects fall in a vacuum when there's no air. In that situation, all objects fall at the same rate, accelerating at 9.8 meters per second per second on Earth. And you should be able to represent that motion through those graphs that I showed you. To finish this video, let's go back to the astronauts. Why do they float around? There are many fantastic videos on this topic, so I'm going to give you a couple of links. The main one I want you to watch is this one please click the link and watch it. If you want more, or if you want a different kind of explanation, try one of these other two links at the bottom. So when we continue the video, you'll have watched that link. Pretty interesting, right? But it shows how many misconceptions float around society. Even that term, zero gravity, is just flat out wrong. Astronauts are so affected by gravity that they're constantly falling towards the Earth. So if you think you'd like to be an astronaut, but you're afraid to go skydiving? Maybe you should rethink that a little. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. Please comment below with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. If you liked this video, please press the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, keep questioning. And remember to never wear tight pants unless you're a captain. Then you're allowed.